New video just in shows former President Trump getting off of his plane in New Jersey just hours after an assassination attempt killed one person. The chaos in Pennsylvania sent shockwaves across the nation. Former President Trump left bloody after a shooter opened fire at that campaign rally in Butler, Pennsylvania. Good evening. I'm Michelle Esteban. And I'm Preston Phillips. Here's what we know right now. Just moments ago, law enforcement identified the gunman as 20-year-old Thomas Matthew Crooks of Bethel Park, Pennsylvania. According to the Associated Press, he fired from a rooftop less than 164 yards away, about a football and a half, a football field and a half away from where President Trump was standing. He was then shot and killed by Secret Service. One person attending the rally was shot and killed. Two others were critically hurt. No motive has been identified yet. And I think that uh, once the shooter is identified, anyone that has specific information on that shooter, uh, that would be very helpful as well to help us uh, assess motive. And, uh, and, and again, as I mentioned earlier, we are absolutely not taking for granted that this was a lone wolf attack. Former President Trump's presidential campaign confirms he will be attending the RNC convention in Milwaukee. That starts on Monday. Tonight, we have team coverage for you on this assassination attempt. Our crews are standing by to tell us how our local leaders are reacting, what this means for public safety and the election going forward. But we want to start tonight with national correspondent Kayla Gaskins. She joins us from Capitol Hill with what we know about this developing situation. Donald Trump releasing a statement in the hours after the attack saying he was shot by a bullet that pierced his upper ear. He also thanked the Secret Service for their action and gave condolences to the rally attendee who died. Trump's campaign confirmed the former president is fine and that he was checked out at a local medical facility. A political rally turned into a crime scene. This is a big crowd. This is a big, big, beautiful crowd. As the former president spoke to his supporters in Butler, Pennsylvania Saturday, gunshots ripped through the air. <laughs> Donald Trump seen reaching for his ear before dropping to the ground. Secret Service immediately rushing the stage to surround him. Screams heard in the crowd. Go. Oh. Oh, guys here. Oh, guys here. After a few tense moments, the former president on his feet. Blood spattered across his cheek and ear. Trump giving a fist bump as Secret Service whisked him away to the hospital. The Associated Press reporting the shooter is dead along with one rally attendee. President Biden spoke to Trump following the shooting and earlier condemned the violence. There's no place in America for this kind of violence. It's sick. It's sick. Republican House Majority Leader Steve Scalise was shot in 2017 by a left-wing activist. On Saturday, Scalise writing, For weeks, Democrat leaders have been fueling ludicrous hysteria that Donald Trump winning re-election would be the end of democracy in America. Clearly, we've seen far-left lunatics act on violent rhetoric in the past. This incendiary rhetoric must stop. We spoke with a Trump supporter who was six rows from the stage. Just a, a sad day for America. Just a really sad day for America. The vibe was... You know, it was open with prayer. People were united. You know, this is America. This is freedom, regardless of your politics. This rally was supposed to be a celebratory moment for Trump heading into the GOP convention in Milwaukee that starts Monday. The convention will no doubt have a very different feel with tighter security now on tap in the wake of Saturday's shooting. In Washington, I'm Kayla Gaskins. Kayla, thanks very much. No details have been released about the phone call between President Biden and Donald Trump. The president is back at the White House tonight. He will convene a briefing with Homeland Security and law enforcement officials tomorrow morning. Here in Washington state, we're getting local reaction from voters. Some are expressing that this is an eye-opener about just how divided this country is. Come with Karina Vargas live tonight in Seattle. Karina, what have people been telling you? Well, Preston, people tell me that violence is never the answer, no matter one's political affiliation. Now, some tell me that they think that this will only further um, the country, that they will further divide the country, but others say that they hope that this might bring people together. Now, take a listen at some of their reactions. We saw it. We were actually looking at television right at the time, and it was just like shock. Absolute shock and just... Well, pretty shocking that there's an assassination attempt. On a, on, a, on a presidential candidate. It's just yeah. shocking, honestly. I never thought like that. This day and age, that something like that would happen. 
Now, those we talked to say that um, their votes are set and that this is not changing how they will be voting in November. Now, the big concern that many are having is safety at the polls, and some tell me that they hope that this uh, will evoke a lot more security measures. But for now, reporting in Seattle, Karina Vargas, Common News. Certainly underscoring the divisive rhetoric. Karina, thank you. There will certainly be consequences for the upcoming election cycle. Today's shooting will lead to a reassessment of political events and rallies all across the country and right here. Como's Paul Rivera joins us now live with what we're expecting to see in the next few days. Paul, such a concerning moment here. Yeah, and it has certainly been mentioned before, but we'll mention it again. Security certainly going to increase at these high-profile events moving forward. Tonight, we talked with someone who has worked in that field before. We're asking them also, how could something like this have happened? We're also going to hear from our political analyst about the ramifications of this moving forward. Jim Fuda now leads Crime Stoppers, but he worked for years with the King County Sheriff's Office, and at the time, he was in special operations and a liaison for Secret Service. So what happened with the security protocols before the assassination attempt on former President Trump? Was there a way to prevent this? There are counter, they call them counter snipers, up looking at the crowd, um, looking at the surrounding areas. And from what I heard on uh, the news is that, the, is that the shooter had not been up on the roof for, for very long, just minutes. Um, uh, should he been spotted? I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm not going to money, money that quarterback that because I wasn't there and the investigation is nowhere near as complete. What, what happens now? Uh, I would think some of it's going to get a little tighter. Um, uh, they'll spread out a little further. There'll be um, other agencies, local, depending on where they go, uh, that they'll, they'll require more uh, more assets. But it is clear a full reassessment of protocols will be happening and work will happen here locally. Do you think the conversations within the law enforcement community have already started? Oh, have, absolutely. What, are, what, are they, what would they be talking about? What happens if this happens here? Same thing what happened in 9-11 and agencies from all over the United States went to, went to New York to see what happened and see how, how their area could do it better. We also talked with Como political analyst Ron Dotsauer. What's your final message to to voters, to Americans, and what is a very difficult day. Continue as best you can to stay engaged, okay? We have to show people around the world that this is not acceptable behavior in this country or, or anywhere else. And we, we, we can show that by participating. Our local and state law enforcement sent me statements. The King County Sheriff's Office told us today this is all under consideration. They say they'll respond to our local events as necessary. WSP told me they are maintaining their focus and their readiness. We'll send it back to you. Paul, thanks very much. New tonight, both Washington State Party chairs condemning the violence. Two gubernatorial candidates are also reflecting on their safety at campaign events. Come senior reporter Chris Daniels joins us in studio with what they're saying tonight, Chris. Well, they all agreed, the people that I talked to, that we need to dial down the rhetoric on a night like tonight. I'm not even shocked, Chris. I, I, I think it's more like dread. Washington GOP Chairman Jim Walsh in Milwaukee and preparing for the Republican National Convention pointed blame at the country's political tenor. I believe we need to move away from talking about personalities and saying someone is a, a bad person because we disagree with them politically. And we need to focus on the policies that, that elected officials advocate. I'm just sort of disappointed and sad that this is uh, happening in, in our great country. Republican gubernatorial candidate Dave Reichert speaking via Zoom before a campaign event. My head is always on a swivel. My staff is always watching. He raised questions about the security at the Trump rally and said he had a close call during his time in Congress. I think that what we need to do is get back to respecting each other's opinion being able to understand that we have the right to express those opinions and respect each other. I don't choose to talk much about sort of threats that I receive or my family receives. That's just sort of a personal choice. But, but you know, my kids are very aware, you know, of the situation. And, um, and that's a very unfortunate side of politics. Democrat Bob Ferguson is also running for governor. I know that on the campaign trail, you've talked about protecting Washington State from a, a potential Trump presidency. Uh, do you do you think now about words and and political rhetoric as we as we move forward? Well, I don't just think about them now after sort of a cowardly attack during my time as Attorney General and Donald Trump was president. You know, we settled our disagreements in a courtroom, which I think is the right way to do it. It was legal briefs. 
Walsh said plans were canceled tonight in Milwaukee, but that everything is still a go for the start of the RNC on Monday. Washington State Democratic Party Chair Shasti Conrad tweeted that the state Democrats, quote, condemn political violence in the strongest of terms. Violence has no place in our democracy. Back to you.